61, 80, 33, 98, 87, 49, 89, 48, 48, 20, 45, 86, 83, 43, 65, 63, 81, 17, 72, 03, 09, 17, 98, 05, 67, 28, 62, 13, 54, 48, 62, 27, 05, 26, 04, 62, 81, 89, 02, 44, 97, 07, 20, 72, 04, 18, 93, 91, 13, 74, 84, 75, 40, 88, 07, 53, 86, 89, 17, 50. We realized we were starting to use game language, so we said let's change the game. We need new goals. The goal needs to be to play well, not just to win. And when we win, to win together. We need to be incentivized to help other people win. Um, so we said, let's try creating a new parallel, a new, it's hard to break the structure that we have, all these silos, the hard structure, that's a really big challenge. But we looked into uh, the isolation thing, crack came in here. People are social, so let's create a parallel, um, safe experience of a different kind of society. So, for example, without breaking all the projects and the silos, we create another layer, which is um, a cooking class, or a photography group, or an unconference across the whole organization, or across different, um, not only silos, but also layers of the organization. Make this a safe space where people can come and have a, a gut feeling of a different kind of a relationship, a different kind of a society. Um, when we did this, the people, everybody I asked said, they never answered that what was valuable in the unconference was the content. They said what was valuable was that now I know the guy in France, and when I have a problem, I'm more likely to call him. So right there, how much time have you cut out with emails? So um, we didn't get very specific. We said this will only work if you create safety, and that's the trick. You can't say we're going to do this tomorrow. There's a whole change agent effort of creating the safety to make this happen. And then um, this is supposed to, the goal is not these events. These events are to create an experience. The experience is to create new goals, bonds, and possibilities that seep into the organization through the individual people who've had a good experience. And this is not specific enough yet, but it could be later. You were uh, talking a lot about the, the vision, uh, establishing a clear vision. Uh, should it be bottom up? Should it be top down? And actually, we, we went a bit away from the uh, vision from the bottom to the uh, top, and instead we talked about having a, a virtues circle, so that you have a virtues, the, the teams are making the virtues that go up through the organization, and then afterwards we have to have the company virtues, the management, top management can make the vision, and it can disseminate through the organization, and then we can take the virtues again, so we have a, what we call an excellence uh, business cycle, that could go on, and go on, and go on, because if the vision that the top management is uh, making doesn't fit the, the virtues of the teams, then we have a problem. Uh, either they have the, the wrong teams or we have the wrong management or they are not talking to each other. Um, I made a mental picture of a ship that if you are a machinist in, in, the, the, in the machine, you don't care if you're sailing to the United States or Japan. You are maintaining your machine. That's your job. That's what you do best. That's what you want. You might want to go to port and, and see girls and bars and so on. But the, the most important thing is that your virtue is to really make the machine work. The vision of the captain is, of course, to, to sail to the United States. But you have to disseminate it down to the machinist so he knows what's important for him is to make the machine work. So it goes all the way around. The machinist actually doesn't care where he go, he's going. Just the machine works. So, just my way of uh, getting it into my head. Uh, and uh, the first one we had over here was uh, create a safe environment for change. Um, and we would like our CFO to, to have a notion that if you make yourself obsolete, you get a raise. Because that's the way that we can get automation, automation into the organization that everyone will strive to get on and move the organization forward. Because if you do make yourself obsolete, you don't lose your job. You're actually getting a new position that is even better than the one, the one you had before. So, cool. Thank you. I like that. Okay, let's go. And we took uh, the blaming culture, and we had kind of two separate discussions. One was more going into an, an analysis of, of um, what are the reasons for that, 
and then we tried to get into the hacking, but it was very difficult. Um, but the blaming culture is basically uh, is also related to the silo hierarchies. Um, it basically inherits that people have separate um, responsibilities. Um, we are also getting into a situation where we are specializing too much. So we have very deep hierarchies and it basically means that people believe this is my place and this is where uh, I work and if it doesn't work, the bigger picture doesn't work, then it's the other guy's uh, fault. Um, and we also had a, uh, an insight on that uh, blaming is typically political. Uh, it ba is based on relationships because if somebody blames somebody I like, I will take his side typically and not look at the, at the content in essence. And that's one of the issues. Um, but how do we actually um, change that? Uh, on the one hand side, we think uh, we need to focus on management because, again, something similar to giving ex incentives on the bigger picture. So if somebody is working on a steering wheel, mm -hmm. he should be incentivized on pushing out maybe a, a whole car instead so that he feels responsible for a part. Um, and we also talked about how to visualize a, a blaming conflict and one idea was to make a role play on management level so let's consider a company that actually has seen that this is an issue if we could create a situation where managers create a mm -hmm. conflict and then afterwards say guys you see what this brought us it brought us nowhere um, maybe we should change and look at this so basically convince the top level to create a conflict for fun. Okay. Um, else there were suggestions of, um, of uh, looking at failed projects obviously and, uh, and uh, analyze them, make retrospectives that we believe that, that uh, failed due to blaming issues. Um, and, and there was another uh, suggestion of uh, starting, if we are too specialized, to start to uh, rotate jobs so that we get a broader idea and we broaden our competencies instead of being stuck down in the middle of a, of a specific thing. That was it. Anything else I missed? Yeah, maybe the, uh, the perfect. Uh, the, the hacking was quite difficult because management is involved. So how do you hack management? Uh, so we thought about like sharing and um, cross-functional goals would be nice. You said that <coughs> because uh, you, you brought the example of the, um, of the factories if you have several factories, uh, factory directors who, who only focus on their factory then don't focus on all the factories and give like uh, one level up goals like, like you have a, uh, a higher goal kind of I don't like the term but um, <coughs> so, so you steer against these goals and don't make a steering wheel, make the driving experience better so, so you broaden your, your view and your Maybe because management and leadership also have goals, like, always have goals like on KPIs and whatever. And maybe like uh, that they are all in, going in one direction, not in separate directions. This is all uh, often this political side. Yeah. I, I got based on this just a minute the, the, the story about uh, how the hack is done in Japanese. Business culture. I don't know if you know that we have this about yeah, the yeah, stuff, the factory stuff. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no but, but, but the the story that I heard is that because society is very hierarchical, you are not allowed to speak free. Okay, mm -hmm. but there's one event when everything with the manager goes drinking really hard. Okay, and that's why everybody is allowed to say whatever because the social let's say rule is that you know you are not really you know to say responsible for what you were saying and everybody knows how it works and that's the platform where the messages the real messages can be exchanged okay? so next day everybody presumes that nothing really happened but the message has been propagated so okay, that's 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 the <laughs> you can see that that point, I, then i have a, another addition which is uh, in finland you go into saunas with customers and so yeah. on and if you have seen each other naked <laughs> not a lot you don't talk about. So that might be another one. Let's go to sauna. Go naked to the <laughs> office. <laughs> so more, yeah. Yeah. To be more alcohol in companies. <laughs> <laughs> Do it both ways. <laughs> okay. And sauna. There's a gender issue maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, well, actually, in the first round, we were talking uh, in our group about um, different uh, experiences of 
um, professionals not connecting uh, and management and professionals not connecting. Um, so we called our context Radiate Info. How, how do you get them connected or how do you radiate information even when they are not connected physically every day at work? Um, um, one um, experience we had was uh, put on a whiteboard next to the coffee machine and uh, put things up, whatever you uh, think, and people start talking about it. Um, another uh, one was use social media, um, like Yammer, and commit to contributing to it, because we had both experiences in which it doesn't work and in which it did work, and the experience where it did work was where people committed to them. Um, we had the idea of a speaker's corner, organize a speaker's corner. Um, we didn't work it out uh, very much, but I, I like the idea very much. Just a soapbox somewhere in the canteen where it's customary that someone steps up and tells their story, whatever. And, well, I'm, I, I'm a storyteller, uh, and I didn't write it down. I'm wondering why I didn't write it down, but tell stories. Um, real, real experiences of successes or failures, or metaphorical stories um, uh, like fairy tales or whatever, which also pass the message. We didn't have um, uh, measurements or how do we know how it worked. I'm very cynical about KPIs, so I don't, well, we, we could think of things that you can measure, but we didn't put them down. It's hear people talk together, see people laugh together, um, uh, be in the canteen together, things like that. Come to laughs. And um, um, uh, Marek added uh, an idea that he saw in America, a thank you wall. Yeah. As opposed to the um, um, a wall of fame, which might end up in uh, be bragging and even organized bragging about our successes. The thank you wall was, well, someone could just stick a small note on it. Um, someone from the business, uh, thank you uh, IT team for having fixed this, whatever. 